about 10 months ago, I called one of my friends and I asked him, hey, do you want to go to Cuba? And he said, uh, yeah, but is it it's illegal? Do we need permission? Do we need permits? Do we need anything? So I said to him, yeah, of course, of course we do. But uh, but don't worry, Obama says it's cool to go. He's, he's, he's working on that. So we looked into it, and in December of 2015, we managed to get in with the purpose of doing documentary photography, and uh, we shot a small video journal. So here it is. Thank you. 50 years of isolating Cuba had failed to promote democracy. It set us back in Latin America. That's why we restored diplomatic relations, opened the door to travel and commerce, positioned ourselves to improve the lives of the Cuban people. Recognize that the Cold War is over. Lift the embargo. And just like that, 50 years of oppression were over. Well, not exactly. Primorosa porque sufre soy tanto quebranto. Oh, patria mía, quién diría que tu cielo azul nublara el llanto. This is Cuba, a place so misunderstood and forgotten that most people don't even realize it's only about 90 miles away from Florida. To put that in perspective, 90 miles is almost exactly the distance between Philadelphia and Baltimore. So, how can a place be so close to us, yet feel so far away? Well, the answer is complicated politics. It all started in the 1950s, when Fidel Castro and the Cuban Revolution took over the island and declared it a socialist state. Then came the Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it all went downhill from there. One of the first things you notice when you get to Cuba are all the cars from the 1950s and 60s. Pretty much anything that predates the embargo has stood still, including architecture and various forms of technology throughout the streets. One of the reasons why I wanted to go to Cuba was to see firsthand what a socialist state looks like. But not any socialist state. A socialist state that has been living under an embargo or blockade for the last 50 years. So just imagine not being able to connect to Wi-Fi or having access to a cell phone on a daily basis. That's the reality that Cubans have been facing for the last five decades. I didn't really just come here for a history lesson. I really wanted to see what young people were doing in their free time. And one of the places we were invited to was La Fabrica de Arte Cubano, or the Cuban Art Factory. This is the place where live music, fashion, film, photography, architecture, literally anything art related comes together under one roof. Oh, did I forget to mention it's also a bar? Llego a Puerto, voy para Mayarín. 
The sad reality is that even if the embargo is completely lifted by tomorrow, there's no possible way for Cubans to accommodate so many tourists out of nowhere. Their infrastructure is completely outdated and the government still controls most of the tourism industry. Thank you.